Matthew McConaughey starred in a movie called A Time to Kill. Mm -hmm. And it's about a black girl who gets raped and murdered. And yes, it's yeah, a courtroom yeah, drama. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. And uh, Ashley Judd. Judd, yeah. At the end of the movie, at the end of the trial, as he's giving his closing arguments, he says, now imagine she's white. Oh, I remember that scene. Yeah. And it was such a monumental, right. powerful, powerful right. moment. Yeah. And it shook me. Uh-huh, yeah. And that's come to kind of define my old-fashioned, you know, kind mm -hmm. of sum up my old-fashioned way of thinking about this. Um, Your I, 90s. I can't, like, yes, so yeah. I can't deal with the language <laughs> uh -huh. um, legalization mm -hmm. that's going mm -hmm. on. Um, but I can viscerally understand this. Mm -hmm. The thing I was thinking about watching this movie is imagine she's a man. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The pace of this movie was maddening. Yeah. Um, but then you understand why it's paced the way it is mm -hmm. and why it's structured the way it is. And, you know, every movie, every story puts elements in, leaves elements out um, in order to present a certain way of thinking about a situation. Mm -hmm. And the thinking about this situation, it's not, and I think it could be faulted for this, mm -hmm. it's not about the the impropriety. Okay. It's about what happens to her from this impropriety yes and if you if you in a way you could criticize this for saying where's the crime in this why aren't we getting something visceral right, about the right, crime right, in this right and i was thinking of this like as it was reaching its end but then i thought maybe that's just not what this movie is so i think i have a an opinion yeah. on that so when you we see a crime but usually in these cases, the sexual, the, the person who is like the, the abuser of the power doesn't see it as a crime. Because she keeps saying right. that Krista was obsessed with me. She came on to me, you know, she, she was saying all these things that like Harvey Weinstein used to yeah. say. Um, and, you, and she deflects a lot, right? Like, oh, you know me. Well, how, could, how dare you make, you know me like i would mm -hmm. never kind of think implying that her somehow her conduct outside of her sex life her personal life would mirror her personal life do you know what i mean what it would like it, it's a reflection of what she would and wouldn't do which is not necessarily the case mm -hmm. which is really not the case mm -hmm. in a lot of people's in, in a lot of cases you see what I'm so saying? So this is very interesting. Yeah. So I was going to say, of course, there's an element of power in this relationship. Mm -hmm. But then the interesting thing is that a protagonist in a film, through point of view, mm -hmm. has an element of power. Yes. And so these two things are fusing together. The For point sure. of view perspective yeah. in a film and the kind of real depiction yeah. <laughs> that's being played out. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. And so she's also very unreliable. We see how unreliable she is because she doesn't think that she did anything wrong, right? She genuinely, I think she genuinely doesn't think she I don't did. know, but that's another I, interesting ambiguity that we don't need to right. necessarily answer. Is she is she defending her? I mean, there's a psyche to that. Right. Is Does she think that she is so almighty right. that she could be beyond uh, punishment? Right. But I think or that whatever. happens in a Harvey it's Weinstein definitely, kind of situation. Definitely, yeah. And... She's a little bit unreliable as, you know. For sure. For sure. Like, because she sees that she hears stuff and then like uh, so the score is gone. All of that. Like, we yeah. can talk about all that stuff too, yeah. because that was weird. It yeah. was, it, it, do you want to get into that? We can talk about. I think that's a huge part of the movie. Like what she's hearing things, but we hear them too. Right. So it's presented as objective sound. Yeah. That she is hearing. Yeah. There is, she, there's there's a repeated shot. It happens maybe six times where it's the same still shot of mm -hmm. her with her eyes open lying in bed in the same exact same position, maybe four or five, six times. Mm -hmm. She gets up and something's happening. So in one case, she, her metronome is going and mm -hmm. it's behind a cabinet. Like randomly. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Uh, in another case, there's like what else happens? I can't even remember. Her score is gone. Her score is gone. Yeah. So I was, I was thinking this is kind of a weird kind of gaslighting, but it's not. Um, but, it might have been though, because imagine yeah. if like her partner had been in on it so and was trying to like. We never know who sent yeah. the text messages. Right. We assume it's her assistant, right. but we don't know. Mm 
Uh, we don't know why her score disappeared. We don't know. We never learn who set up that metronome. Right. Um, yeah, really weird stuff. And she's got these nervous tics and yeah. she we don't know if she's hearing things. So we don't know if she's a little bit schizo yeah. or if she's being gaslit. Yeah, a little bit of like end. Roman yeah. Polanski's. Yeah. Um, we don't know. Rosemary's baby. No, no I was uh, thinking of the, uh, the uh, contempt. Wait. Repulsion. Repulsion. Yeah. I was thinking of that. Is she going crazy in I the apartment? Always, I always... Um, that movie shook me. Yeah. I always confuse contempt and uh, repulsion. Rosemary's Baby? Yeah. No, repulsion and oh, contempt. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was very interesting. And yes. he left these ambiguities open. Right. And I thought the filmmaking... This is Todd... What's his name? Todd Haynes? Fields. Todd Fields? I think. Yeah. I said Todd Haynes. That's Who's amazing. Todd Haynes? He's another director. Um, sorry. As I look at my phone while whilst doing a podcast whilst tar directed by todd field right. so todd field has not done many movies but they've all been pure gold oh apparently. yeah i haven't seen his other two movies i haven't either but he's he started out as an actor he does producing screenwriting stuff like that this is his third film mm -hmm. and he takes like eight years in between movies mm -hmm. but this was a very patient film mm -hmm. very odd film uh very particular very obsessive i would say yeah and Kate Blanchett is incredible. Yeah. And she, oh man, like in the very beginning there, I knew I would like this movie because the opening scene after the Peruvian like song or whatever, um, they showed her tailor. She gets her, yeah. her clothes tailored, right? And, and they're reading off her resume. <laughs> yeah. And she's, you know, just kind of putting on her jacket yeah. at, you know. She obviously bespoke. likes fashion and nice yeah. things. And she looks great. And there's something. I couldn't, when you said, imagine she were a man, mm -hmm. I couldn't help but imagine she were a man because yeah. um, there were a lot of her life is kind of lived as if she were a man a like, powerful man a powerful man and it was very interesting because when she lost that power she be kind of she kind of became a, a woman again did you oh, notice this? interesting yeah oh you're totally right yeah, yeah. i didn't even think about that until yeah. you said that but you're absolutely right and i no it really like struck wow. me yeah. yeah because when she lost that power she was there was a lot of things there were a lot of things that she had to deal with all of a sudden as a woman but when yeah. she had that power she was treated as like a man almost yeah. and in the very beginning she was doing that interview in that mm -hmm. interview scene you know the interviewer said something like you know what does it mean something like you know as a lesbian female conductor and she was like what does that even mean mm -hmm. you know and she says that with such you know she had that maestro yeah dickishness about definitely her. <laughs> and, and it was so exhilarating to watch as a woman yeah 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 and that was part of the eye candy for me that yeah. was part of the escapism because mm -hmm. i you know i briefly entertained like oh that what if that were possible what if mm -hmm. i became so good at what i did mm -hmm. and just sort of lived like a man man you know mm -hmm. like, like a powerful yeah. man yeah, that yeah. would be amazing yeah we figure out she's somewhere in Asia. Somewhere in Southeast Asia. We both were like, is that Bangkok? We right? thought Bangkok yeah. first, and then I thought Cambodia. Yeah. And then you said Myanmar. It might be Myanmar because they all speak very good English, yeah. and I heard that about Myanmar. Yeah. And I looked it up later, okay. and apparently it was deliberately ambiguous. Okay. I like it when they do this. But the orchestra that she was working with was the Thai something orchestra. Hmm. Youth orchestra. But they did speak in a language. There was a scene where they were speaking yeah, in a language. Yeah, I don't know what that... That yeah. apparently was like Thai or something. Okay. Um, because the, the actor was Thai, Okay. I guess. Um, but then the rest of the people in the in the, in the the scenes right. where she's in like the uh, Song Tao driving, yeah. they, they, they didn't look Thai to me. And the Song Tao didn't look like a Thai Song Tao. No, it wasn't. And it also... <laughs> um, the streets didn't look like yeah. they were in Right. I in wonder Thailand. where they shot it. We yeah, can look it the, up. Yeah, but. I would really like to know. Yeah. But it was deliberately ambiguous. Mm -hmm. There's very little information about yeah, where they right. shot it. But the, the orchestra was Thai. And the very at the very end, she was seemingly conducting for... Okay, so it was a cosplay for a video game. It was so a cosplay weird. event for a video game called Monster. There's a full orchestra, and then down drops three screens. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting mm -hmm. that... Yeah. 
the screens coming down from the ceiling were very noisy. Yeah. This is not what you're going to get right, at the right. Berlin Phil yeah. <laughs> Philharmonic. And then the, the camera pans across these oddly costumed people mm -hmm. and i remember thinking this is the last shot of the film yeah and it was yeah i thought so too yeah yeah i just had a feeling like, so she goes and she has to get a massage she gets food poisoning you know yeah. she's like it's the knocking down of privilege but she there's never here's what's different from the from the male journey okay <laughs> from the man's journey yeah. classically in a film like this mm -hmm. so this is an anti-hero movie mm -hmm. you're not going to get your redemption at the end mm -hmm. but what you will get is a man kind of at the end of the film, reaching some extreme depth. Mm -hmm. And then the movie's over. Right. But she didn't really. Yeah. She got her privilege knocked down yeah. <laughs> and she dealt was, with it. was and, dealing with yeah, it. Yeah, she was dealing with it. It was a, yeah. it was a different world. Yeah. And um, there was a scene that I'd like to talk about her partner. Um, so there's. There's certain tidbits revealed about her partner. Her partner is, I think, she's first violin. Yeah, in and, her orchestra. Yeah, in her orchestra. So the Berlin Philharmonic, that's huge, right? Yes. Um, and her family, she probably comes from this like hoity-toity family who is like very well connected. And the partner, Susan, says something, Sharon, Susan? Yeah, one of those like... Her partner. Yeah, her partner, Sharon. Wait, her partner, her, her lover. Yeah, her lover, partner, mm -hmm. slash partner. She throws out some information about their personal life during their fight. So she, there was a something that she said about Lydia having been very political in her career, right? So she, you know, asked her, like, who do I go to? Like, what do I do? How do I play this game? Like, you know, and so, like, it's implied that her partner, kind of her wife, guided her into this like you know had a had a hand mm, in you know mm, mm. pulling her up yeah, yeah to that position which is usually which is how these things work yeah. you know like it, as far as i know yeah. yeah yeah um but i think the 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 fight with her partner revealed to me at least that right the power right. that she had as mm -hmm. maestro and the fame and the money and all the status was actually important to lydia and oh for sure yeah and i think because so for some people it's genuinely not that important for some artists like i've i think that like so, you know there's a I, I i do sort of separate artists into two categories there are those who genuinely only care about the work mm -hmm. like they you know they they as long as they can work mm -hmm. they you know they'll enjoy the perks mm -hmm. but they genuinely don't only care about the work and mm -hmm. i think for lydia it was she did care about the work i think she but did she too. also really it was important that she i think so enjoy too. the privilege yeah and it, it was played off a yeah. little ambiguous in another ambiguity we're, we're not sure if she's kind of performing her mm -hmm. greatness right or if she really you know it's something i always wonder about with people who become famous mm -hmm. is they seem to care they seem to take on this air of fame Yes. And they don't act like real people anymore. Yeah. So that fight with her partner, when her partner said, you asked me, like, you know, what do I do? Who do I go to? That proved to me that she was very political and that she was putting on a lot of airs because she dropped that those airs when she lost all of her power. She kind of returned to who she yeah. was, I guess, yeah. that we never saw. Right. But that you're right. That's yeah. I'm glad you pulled this out, that her partner... Mm -hmm. mentioned about her mm -hmm. so yeah it's kind of it's a it's a journey from yeah from privilege to normalcy yeah 